Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. So today marks the beginning of a new series. And you can see here, we have a chassis of a robot right in front of us. And this chassis basically came from China. And what we will do is we will modify this kit and create something amazing out of this. Now, what is the concept of this? Before we actually get into the specifications of what controller, what hardware we exactly we are going to use, let's let's talk about the overall picture. So the idea is that we are trying to create a self-driving car. So we are going to use um, what you call uh, precision motors and with encoders so that we have a little more performance than before. Now, what do I mean by before? Well, uh, earlier we tried off this Raspberry Pi based uh, self-driving car which had a Raspberry Pi 4 it had a LiDAR and uh, this is a 7 inch screen and then at the back you can see that we had these cheap motors and we had the motor driver now uh, this this was good to start off with but again the the idea of cheap motors and then the Raspberry Pi itself, it's, it's not that powerful. So what we have to do is we have to upgrade it to get some better performance so that we can try out different AI models and we can add up different AI models as well together and we can do some basic image processing as well. So in, in this chassis, what we will do is uh, we have a major upgrade in terms of the motors. Now the motors are more precise and they have encoders. So that is a plus. And after that, we have uh, the biggest actually um, upgrade is basically our Jetson Nano. So earlier we had the Raspberry Pi 4 and now we have the Jetson Nano. Now this is provided by Nvidia and uh, this is manufactured by Nvidia and it is much more powerful than your Raspberry Pi. And what we will do is we will use this to actually run our robot and we will uh, at the same time we are going to process a lot of different models of AI and we will see how those work out for us. And at the end of the day we can compare these two robots uh, in terms of performance uh, such as uh, frame rates and uh, what do you call uh, the temperature of your CPU and stuff like that. So um, let's let's have a brief overview of the hardware. So uh, before we begin, this kit actually is a little bit expensive. You can say it's more towards the expensive side. It was about three hundred something dollars, and uh, the the cost is because of the motors. They are not that cheap and then because of the mechanum wheels. Now uh, the mechanum wheels, uh, this these are basically made up of um, aluminium alloy. So that's why they are expensive and usually mechanum wheels, they are expensive. Now what is the concept behind mechanum wheels? Well, uh, the mechanum wheels, they can allow you to travel horizontally, vertically and even in diagonal direction. So and this configuration is what you see in an actual car so you have these four wheels it's not like the omni wheels where if you want to uh, rotate in both horizontal and vertical you will have to place your wheels over here so two over here and then two over here so it's not like that this is the regular convention and based on this convention you can move either direction so that will be interesting to see how that turns out and uh, then for the microcontroller we will be using arduino now i don't want to connect uh, the what do you call the driver the motor driver directly to our uh, jetson nano there are a couple of reasons for that uh, one of the biggest reasons that i feel is that uh, we need to have modularity and uh, i have discussed this concept uh, before as well Modularity is basically you are creating different processes and you are separating them uh, individually. So this means that if I wanted to remove one component, I can easily remove that component without changing a lot of the other things. So the idea in terms of hardware and software is that you have one main module, one main uh, brain or the script, and then that script actually communicates with other scripts. 
For example, one script is for motor driver, the other script is for lane detection, the other script is for uh, just for camera. So we have these uh, many different scripts that we run individually and then they communicate with the main uh, driver or the, the main script. So I, I want to keep the, the motor part separate and that will also give us the flexibility of adding more sensors uh, very easily. So that's why I want to use this Arduino board and then we can also add this uh, sensor shield now, uh, this is one of my favorite uh, pieces of um, electronics because it's, it's, it makes it very simple to add sensors to the Arduino board. So you, you can attach this with uh, Arduino, uh, what do you call it, Uno. You can also attach it with the Arduino Mega. Uh, it's basically the same thing. So it will not accommodate the rest of them, but uh, this area it will. So... Um, I don't think we will use Mega for this case. Uh, I think Uno is more than enough. And then we will create a serial communication and we will connect it to our, uh, what do you call it, Tetsin Nano. And this way we will keep the motor part separate, completely separate from our main module, which is our uh, Jetson Nano. Okay, that is uh, for uh, the, what do you call it, the microprocessor and the microcontroller. Now let's talk about the drivers. So. For the motor drivers, we have these cheap drivers again, and um, the, the good thing about this uh, this is that it's very cheap and it can handle 3 amperes, so that is pretty good. Uh, we also have another module, uh, I don't remember the exact name, I think the number is here, it's L293D. Okay, this one is uh, the one that ends with D. and. Uh, the unfortunate part about this is that it does not, uh, what do you call, handle a lot of current. We only have 600 milliamperes. Whereas this one is basically, uh, it ends with an N. It's the same configuration but ends with an N. And um, this one has up to 3 amperes, which is quite huge if you compare to this one. But again, uh, the thing is that this one can handle 4 motors at the same time but this can handle only two so i might add two of these or just one of this now the current doesn't bother me that much because at the end of the day we are not going to use this uh, on uh, tough trains or something like that we just want to create a self-driving path and we are going to run over it uh, because it, this does not have any suspension or any uh, what do you call the uh, other stuff to prevent you know uh, shaking so what we will do is we will focus just mainly on the software part where we want to add more stuff uh, in terms of AI and in terms of uh, basic image processing techniques so when it comes to the battery uh, this this kit comes with a battery and this is 12 volts and it has uh, 1.2 amperes now the thing is that it comes with a button as well and it comes with a charging port which is great so we can just uh, plug that in but to be honest it's quite bulky uh, not not the structure itself but the cables as you can see they are quite far apart so I, I'm not sure maybe I'll cut them off and use just this part um, because they do take up quite a bit of room as you can see here if I just put it here it's taking half of the space so, and it and looks bad. I don't know, maybe I will change it or maybe I'll use another button. Uh, I have a few buttons um, lying around. So maybe I'll pick one of these and let's see what happens there. So um, let's go forward. And then I also have this device that actually measures the current and voltage. Maybe we will use this to measure the voltage and the current for the motors and uh, Maybe it will give us the answer to the question whether we should use this or not. Uh, again, this one is a maybe. Okay, and uh, then at the end, we have to decide where everything goes. And uh, you can see that we have, let's say if we take this, we have our two edge bridge, and then we have our microcontroller with our sensor shield, and then we have our battery. And at the end we have our switch so if we put this all of this together it will be something 
like this so this will be the first layer of course we cannot put everything on the first layer because we are you know moving towards a more advanced robot so we want to make uh, multiple layers as we did in this one as well so as you can see here we have two layers so because we have to supply the battery for this as well uh, i'm not going to use this battery to actually run this uh, jetson nano uh, and uh, most probably i'm going to use a power bank with um, that can provide good uh, amount of currents so so what we'll do is we will create a top layer on this and then we will add maybe the Jetson Nano on top of that and we will cover it somehow so that it remains safe. And at the end of the day, the main component uh, is our camera. So I, I haven't yet decided which camera to use. So as you can see here, we are using the Raspberry Pi main camera. So uh, this is just a lens. I can just pop it out and you can see this is your Raspberry Pi module. The regular one and this is by the way the lens that can uh, oh, pop directly on the camera i just 3d printed some part and attached it together so th the idea is that right now it's um it's everything is a little bit rough but um, I'm, I'm thinking more towards which way to go in terms of the physical aspect so where each component should go and uh, once we have figured that out, then we can move on to the software part. And of course, we are going to control it with a PlayStation 4 controller. We have the dongle. If you don't have the dongle, you can use it with the Bluetooth as well. Um, but uh, it is recommended to use with this dongle. It, it works better with the dongle. And if you have a direct, uh, what do you call, uh, the one with the cable, you can use that as well. That should work fine as well. And at the end of the day, we want to add a LiDAR as well because LiDAR is quite important. So eventually, we will be using this with ROS as well. So we want to add navigation, maybe SLAM and uh, things like that so that it can avoid ob obstacles and it can move around and it can survey a complete area and create a map of it and things like that. We will start off with Python and uh, what do you call the uh, basic implementation and then we probably will move on to ROS. So I'm very excited about this project because it is just starting off and it looks very promising and I hope um, it ends up as I have um, imagined it and hopefully it will be a very good learning process and we will come up with things that we did not even think about. So that is the main goal. So that is it for this video i hope you have um, learned something new maybe you have some ideas you can uh, put them in the comment i will be happy to implement your ideas on this robot and we will build it together and we will see how we can uh, progress with this so if you like the video give it a thumbs up and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet do subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos that we will uh, do on this robot and I will see you in the next one.